Um, well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, to all of those of you who have joined us today. Uh, a very special good morning to our colleagues who are joining us bright and early from Costa Rica at 8 a.m. Um, it's fantastic to see so many of you online for the second of our two-part webinar series. Uh, for those who were unable to join us last week, the CIBIT Forest team convened a panel with our colleagues and partners from the Global Environment Facility and the UNFCCC to explore and unpack the enhanced transparency framework. Uh, that dialogue focused on some of the more broad topics of interest, mainly exploring what is changing for parties and countries as we move from measurement reporting and verification to the new enhanced transparency framework and how the CIBIT Forest project is supporting countries in that transition. And today we're really excited to continue elements of that dialogue, but really narrow in a bit more on the national level. And we're thrilled to be able to zoom in more with our colleagues from Costa Rica and to explore the national system for monitoring land cover, land use and ecosystems called Simocute. So in today's sessions, we will blend both presentations and have a moderated dialogue to hopefully shine the spotlight on the system, which has been in development since 2015. We will explore some of its strengths and challenges that it's had in its development. And to do so, we will hear first from Mr. Lucio Santos and Mr. Rafael Vargas. We will also hear today from the CIBIT Forest Project Coordinator, Ms. Rocio Condor, who will give us a quick overview of the project activities and specifically touch on the NFMS tool, which is being piloted at country levels to help enhance and create a more robust national forest monitoring system. Following these presentations, we will host a moderated dialogue and take questions from all of you. Now, before we jump in any further to the actual content, let me start by introducing myself. My name is Khalil Walji. I work for the National Forest Monitoring Team here at FAO, and I'll be your moderator and overall company for today's session. Uh, I am perhaps like some of you, a non-expert in these topics, but really hope that our discussion and through the presentations, we can uncover and focus on some of these various themes and expertise that are brought forth by our speakers. Now that you know who I am, I'd love to hear more about you. So I invite you to take a moment, pop your name and your affiliation into the chat box below and share with us where you're from. You'll also note that we are hosting this session in a webinar style, meaning that all of your microphones are muted. However, you still have the opportunity to interact with us and with our panelists. To do so, you can pose a question in the Q&A box below. And if someone has already posed a question of interest, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Um, today, we have our colleague, Emily Donegan from FAO, who will be helping us select the most appropriate questions for our panel. So I hope that gives you a brief overview of how we'll spend the next hour together and how we can interact through the Zoom platform. So without delaying any further, I'd like to introduce you to our first speaker, Mr. Lucio Santos from FAO, a forestry officer and Red Plus coordinator in the Latin American and Caribbean region, who is located in the sub-regional office for Mesoamerica in Panama. Lucio, Lucio will start us off with a presentation and some introductory remarks. Lucio, thanks very much for joining us and I turn the screen over to you. Thanks so much, uh, Halil, and the speakers and participants. Uh, I'm excited to be here to, uh, today to highlight the importance of forest data and transparency, especially uh, for sharing the lessons learned of Costa Rica regarding the institutionalization and the strengthening of the National Forest Monitoring System, which is a key piece to provide information um, related to climate action in a transparent and, and, and open way. Just to confirm, are you seeing my, my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Perfect. Perfect. So let me give you some remarks on forest relevance, which plays a, a central role in combating climate change. Uh, as, you, uh, as you may be uh, are aware, terrestrial ecosystem, mainly forests, contribute significantly to, to climate change uh, mitigations, since they, they remove about one tier of the current anthropogenic CO2 uh, equivalent uh, greenhouse gas emission. Uh, also, forests are crucial in helping us adapt to climate change as they help ensure water availability, 
protect against landslides, prevent desertification, and provide alternative livelihoods for people. Likewise, protecting forests conserves the biodiversity that is vital for plants, humans, and other animals to adapt to climate change. Uh, forests cover 31% of the global land area, and the net loss of forest area has decreased substantially since 1990, but deforestation and forest degradation continue to take place at alarming rates, resulting in significant loss of biodiversity and emission of, of greenhouse gases. Uh, in the next slide, Uh, you will you, you, you see a snapshot of the greenhouse gas emission profile that illustrate the share of economy-wide emission by sector in the, in the left side for all the Latin American region and in the right side for uh, assuming in Central America. Uh, as you can see, the agriculture and the forestry and other land use uh, sector represents the largest share of emission in the region, uh, 46%. While in Central America also, the LULUCF sector and the agricultural sector are also a significant source of emissions. So uh, it, this, the message is we, we need urgent to take action to limit our emission and to do so, we need to be better informed in order to take the best decision. Uh, for, to do that, for, for, for this, we need to uh, the, the robust and sustainable monitoring system in order to produce the information to support also domestic policies uh, and goals. That uh, uh, in, uh, information system will also provide information of countries NDC for communication and accounting, as well as for the reporting of emission and removals from the forestry sector in the frame of the enhancement transparency framework of the of the Paris Agreement. Well, um, in, in this knowledge sharing session, you will have the opportunity of knowing Costa Rica's experience that allowed the strengthening uh, the functionalities and sustainability over the time of its national forest monitoring system. Uh, I would like finally to emphasize on the importance to adopt appropriate legal frameworks that regulate aspects of national forest monitoring system and clarify roles and responsibilities of national institutions to ensure sustainability. Uh, the, the figure uh, here shows a stepwise approach for this legal framework starting by a, a gap analysis of the forest legal framework focusing on national forest monitoring system aspects and in the roles and responsibilities of national or subnational institutions following up by following by uh, interviews with key stakeholders from different institutions involved in national forest monitoring system activities in order to identify gaps uh, uh, for then identify legal provision that are needed to cover these gaps. And finally, recommend and drafting legal instruments to be channeled to the appropriate national entities. Uh, so uh, let, me, let me start here and hand over to Khalil. Uh, I, I hope you will enjoy the, the webinar and keep available for the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks so much, Lucio, for these uh, brief opening remarks, and we'll have an opportunity to dive a bit more into these topics in our discussion. Um, but I really, I, I quite like your final slide, which I think highlights, but also visualizes the stepwise approach that's needed for uh, creating appropriate legal frameworks in, in, uh, in support of functional NFMS systems, but also calls to the need of uh, strong country ownership. So I think it's a, a really great way to start our, our webinar today, and I think we can dive in a bit more later on. Um, but I'd like to now introduce our next presentation, um, and I'd like to start with a, a bit of brief background on the CBIT Forest Project, which is funded through the Global Environment Facility Trust Fund. The FAO Jeff partnership is one that has been ongoing for nearly 20 years and has been key to addressing critical issues at the intersection of agriculture and the environment. Uh, more broadly, the FAO Jeff partnership has enabled over 130 countries to build a healthier planet and more resilient communities. Currently, 
uh, FAO Jeff projects make up over 20% of the current Jeff 7 portfolio. And in the next presentation, we will hear about one of those initiatives, the capacity building for increased transparency, Civit Forests. FAO currently has 12 CBIT projects, two global projects, the CBIT Forest Project and CBIT AFOLU, and the remaining 10 are national Civit programs. So now to give us a much more in-depth overview, I'd like to turn the floor to Rocio Condor, forestry officer and the project coordinator of the Civit Forest Project. Rocio, thanks for joining us, and I turn the microphone to you. Thank you very much, Halil. Um, and uh, I will start sharing the screen. Just let me know what do you see so I can start my presentation. Perfect. Thanks, uh, Halil, and thanks, Lucio, for these welcoming remarks. And let me add uh, by sharing with all participants um, three key messages. Uh, we need to urgently take action to tackle climate change and its impact. The Paris Agreement and its call for better and more transparent data is instrumental. The Paris Agreement was signed by 195 countries represented their commitment to limit the rise of global average temperature to well below two degrees Celsius and to pursue efforts to limit the increase to 1.5 degrees. To reach this goal, we need to take bold and unprecedented action to limit our emissions. And to do this, we need stakeholders and governments to, who are informed by and acting with better and more transparent data. But how do we ensure that? A fully functioning multipurpose national forest monitoring system allows countries to track progress on climate action and effectively report on forest related emissions and removals, as well as respond to their own forest data needs. Building an NFMS is a complex national scale effort that must consider multiple institutional, technical, and financial aspects. The system should increase transparency, reliability of information produced, and ensure a long-term perspective through participatory processes. Ultimately, national forest monitoring systems can help countries to meet the requirements of the transparency framework under the Paris Agreement. National ownership and sustainability of the NFMS depends on institutional capacities to meet the forest information needs of users. This calls for continuous strengthening of human capacities in the technical field of forest monitoring, program management, administration, and operation. The NFMS should ensure that persons responsible for implementation have the appropriate level of education and the necessary knowledge and experience. There is a need to develop and sustain national capacity to maintain the NFMS, in particular technical capacity in remote sensing, field measurement, data processing, information management and communication techniques. But how is FAO contributing to efforts toward the implementation of the Paris Agreement? Building global capacity to increase transparency in the forest sector, CVIT Forest, is a two-year project of the FAO financed by the Capacity Building Initiative for Transparency Trust Fund of the Global Environment Facility, aiming to strengthen the institutional and technical capacities of developing countries to collect, analyze, and disseminate forest-related data. This project is built on already existing efforts of the FAO to support countries on forest monitoring at global and national levels. Therefore, this project is being implemented by FAO's Global Forest Resource Assessment and the National Forest Monitoring Teams. How are we doing that? By organizing sub-regional and national workshops across uh, the regions, 26 countries targeted, as well as 187 countries in, and territories included as part of the global network of national correspondents for the FRA. It strengthened the network of key partners such as the UNFCCC, GFOI, UNEP, UNDP by seeking co cooperation to work on products or activities of the project. Upgrading FAO's FRA 2020 reporting and dissemination platform to make forest data reporting easier in the future. And actually, I'm happy to share with you that this morning the FAO has released the full results of the FRA 2020 through three key resources, the FRA main report, the 
2,136 detailed reports of all countries and territories of the world, as well as the platform I've, I've just mentioned. Developing the e-learning course to enable access to knowledge about the ETF and the forest to anyone, anywhere in multiple languages. The English version was just launched uh, on the 15th of July. If you miss it, please access our web story to get the video. By also building and maintaining continuous uh, awareness of the project, we have also prepared uh, multiple language case studies on forest and transparency, being Costa Rica one of them. And last but not least, developing a spreadsheet-based based tool to facilitate the assessment of gaps and needs in countries' national forest monitoring. This is like, I, I would like to introduce some key information related to the NFMS assessment tool. How can country benefit? The NFMS assessment tool aims to assist countries in strengthening their NFMS by facilitating understanding of FAO's voluntary guidelines on national forest monitoring, identifying needs, gaps, and weakness, enhancing opportunities to focus countries' efforts and investment, helping to organize international cooperation and build a work plan together with stakeholders and partners, assessing progress in identifying capacity gaps in forest monitoring. The tool is already available in English, French, and Spanish, and is accessible through the e-learning course on forests and transparency under the Paris Agreement. Here is the link to the course, which is accessible online or downloadable. Have a look with me to the e-learning. The first model will explain how we are moving from the measurement reporting and verification framework toward the ETF under the Paris Agreement. The second model reviews the goal and the scope of the NFMS and presents key guidance elements to strengthen national forest monitoring capacities. And then you will find the new tool. And the last module discusses how the NFMS enabled countries to produce reliable and transparent data and thus contribute with the ETF. Thank you very much for your attention. Let me end by saying that all countries have innovative solutions to offer developing countries in particular, emerging economies, are increasingly cooperating and exchanging knowledge and development solution with other developing countries. FAO is fully committed to facilitating this connection. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rocio. Uh, just a few interventions from my side before we move to the next presentation. I see in the Q&A box, we already have two questions. Um, there's no uh, certificate available for participation in this webinar. However, if you are uh, keen to earn a certificate, I do think the, the new e-courses, e-learning courses, which Rocio has just mentioned and are now available, they were launched last week, is the perfect way to really solidify some of the, the content that we're discussing today. So I believe Emily has already shared that link in the chat. Uh, please follow it there. They're available online and offline to be downloaded. So take a look um, if you are seeking a certificate. But uh, yeah, thank you very much, Rocio, for the presentation. I think you were spot on there with your final remarks when you said uh, different countries have innovative solutions to offer and thus the importance really of knowledge sharing and co-creating solutions together. And I think this is also why we're very excited to hear from our next speaker to get uh, the main presentation of our webinar today. I think Costa Rica is well known as a world leader um, in environmental sustainability for many reasons, but Simocute, the Simocute system may be needed to, add it, to be added to that list. Um, it really shows the, the main purpose of finding solutions uh, across, uh, by, by collecting data through cross-sectoral uh, means. And I think uh, it's trying to find solutions across a landscape, which is uh, integral to the global challenges that we're currently facing. So um, I won't take up too much more time, but I'd like to invite our next speaker, Mr. Rafael Monge from the director He's the director of the National Center for Geo-Environmental Information at the Ministry of Environment and Energy of Costa Rica. Rafael is an economist with broad experience in different fields related to environmental information, including the development of the National Land Use, Land Cover, and Ecosystem Monitoring System, Simocute. Rafael, we thank you for making the time to join us and look forward to your presentation. The screen is yours. Hola, Halil. Thank you very much. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Just let me know know when you're able to see it. Perfect. Okay, great. And 
uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation to participate in this webinar, Forest Data and Transparency, zooming on Costa Rica's experience. Uh, hello to everybody around the world that has joined us in this live streaming of the webinar, and also to those who are watching, will be watching this recording. I saw some of the names there of people that I know, and actually you're going to see them in some of the pictures that I'm going to show in this presentation. Um, thank you very much to FAO for organizing this event and congratulations for the launch of the e-learning course on forest and transparency under the Paris Agreement. Also, thank you for considering Costa Rica as a case study for this course and for highlighting our progress in the development of our national land use, land cover and ecosystem monitoring system uh, we call Simocuti. Um, this gives us a lot of motivation and inspiration to continue with our work and also to share our knowledge with other countries that may face the same challenges we have had in order to build a robust national forest monitoring system and generate, generate more clear, transparent, accessible, and accurate forest data of our country. And I'm going to switch my screen to, oh, I have to start zoom out because uh, today I want to zoom in to Costa Rica first and uh, I want to switch my screen to the geographic viewer that we are developing for the technological platform of Simocuti. Uh, this is the first time we're showing this live and this geographic viewer hasn't even been launched yet and you are getting a quick preview of how is it going to look like. Um, Costa Rica is a country in Central America, located in the tropical zone of the Northern Hemisphere. Our unofficial slogan is Pura Vida. Uh, we have uh, coasts in, in the Pacific and in the Atlantic. And we're neighbors with Panama in the South, also with Nicaragua in the North, but also we are neighbors with Ecuador and Colombia in our marine territory. Our country is 11 times bigger in the sea than in the land. And we are responsible of 51,000 square kilometers of land. Uh, as forest only grows inland, that's the territory where I'm going to focus today's presentation. As you mentioned, Halil, we have built a renowned green trademark center on conservation, reforestation, national parks, and high ambitious goals. This has been an important driver of our economy, uh, of our economic growth and well-being of the nation. We are also renowned for our biodiversity, and here you can find holding between four and six percent of world, the world's species. Uh, Twenty-six percent. 26% of our territory is covered by protected areas. And to promote connectivity with these areas, we have also uh, defined 44 biological corridors that represent 32% of our land's territory. Uh, according to the latest data reported by Costa Rica to the Global Forest uh, Resource Assessment, the FRA FAO, 59.44% uh, of our country is uh, covered by forests by the year 2020. I'm going to go back to the presentation. Okay. Well, back to the slides. Uh, here you can see the, a map with the same information that I was showing you before with the protected areas and bi biological uh, corridors uh, of the country. And here you can also see a map of the types of forests in Costa Rica for 2014. Uh, this was generating during the development process of our national forest inventory. Uh, in this territory, 31% is classified as mature forest which is a forest with more than six, 75 years of age. These are the dark greens that we have uh, here in the map. Uh, also, 39% uh, of all the forest cover is located in state protected areas, and 61% is located in private territories. Uh, with this information of the forest inventory, we have also created forest environmental accounts using the United Nations Framework System of Environmental and Economic Accounting, which provides a methodology to measure national capital and in physical and monetary values. 
uh, we analyzed that for 2013, the extended forest economy represented 2% of our country's GDP, compared to the 0.2% that is estimated for, for the forestry sector uh, during the same year using the traditional national accounts methodology. However, this analysis doesn't include the value of the ecosystem services that comes from the forest, and we hope to generate new information on that soon with our colleagues from the Central Bank. Uh, also, Costa Rica, since 2010, Costa Rica has demonstrated a sustained effort in the implementation of red actions at the national level. The country has historically operated its national system of protected areas and its program of payments for ecosystem ser environmental services, which together cover 35% of the country and 70% of the forest. This has been reflected in the growth trend of the emission reductions observed during the 2010-2015 period. During this time, more than 26 million tons of CO2 emissions reductions have been reached, resulting in doubling emission reductions observed in 2010. Costa Rica shows a clear tendency to recover forest uh, resources. Uh, uh, the country halted the net loss of forests and has begun a gain of native uh, forest. Between 1986 and 2015, the deforested area fell gradually, as shown in, the, um, in this left, and the area of secondary forest has grown steadily, evidencing a trend of increase in forest cover. The trend of increasing emission reductions demonstrate the country's performance in implementing red policies and measures, significantly influencing the following factors. Uh, the conservation of primary forests, reduction of deforestation in primary and secondary forests, which has significantly reduced carbon emissions, and the recovery of nat native forests, improving carbon stocks, and significantly increasing carbon removals due to forest growth. An important legal framework and different institutions that support, uh, support how we manage our forests in Costa Rica. The Forest Law of 1996, represented in this slide, uh, in combination with the Organic Environmental Law of 1995 and the Biodiversity Law of 1998, represent the legal body that creates and defines the roles and re responsibilities of the institutions in the forest sector like the National System of Conservation Areas, SINAC, or, and the National Forestry Financing Fund, FONAFIFO. It's important to highlight that this forest law, because it mandates that in forest territories, land use change is not permitted in Costa Rica, only for specific reasons. We have also defined a set of policy instruments that uh, define our ambitious sustainable development targets, like the National Development Plan, the National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan, the National Decarbonization Plan, and the National Forestry Development Plan. These instruments are created, guided, and supported by the international processes where our country actively participates, like the Nation, United Nations 2030 Agenda on, for Sustainable Development and the three Rio Conventions on Biodiversity, Climate Change, and Desertification. The National Decarbonization Plan establishes the ambitious goal of becoming a zero emi net emissions economy by 2050, in line with the objectives of the Paris Climate Change Agreement. With the goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, the plan includes significant measures in public and private transport, energy, industry, agriculture, waste management, and rural, urban, and forest management. Just a second to fix it. To monitor the emission reductions commitments related to the National Red Strategy, Costa Rica has developed the National Land Use, Land Cover, and Ecosystem Monitoring System, CIMOCUTE, which has grown to become a comprehensive, multi-purpose, and more multidisciplinary monitoring system that supports various decision-making processes. CIMOCUTE is one of the main initiatives of the government of Costa Rica to promote the generation and use of high-quality data and reliable information for decision-making in the public and private sectors. 
in particular regarding land use monitoring and planning from climate change and various other reporting purposes. The construction of Sigma Cute has been a participatory and includes a participatory process and includes key stakeholders from public and private institutions from the agriculture and environmental sectors, as well as international agencies. A key of the success of Simocute has been the high level of coordination and integration among these stakeholders. This picture shows an important high level meeting we organized with the leadership of the Bar and the uh, of Benign and the Vice Minister for Agriculture uh, when, and also in this meeting, we launched the uh, Simocute's official website uh, uh, shown in this next slide. You can find us in the address simocute.go.cr. The primary objective of Simocute is to provide consistent and coherent information at a national scale on the state and changes in the country's land use, land cover, and ecosystems. It includes several coordinated subsystems that will integrate field-based data with remote sensing-based information to provide comprehensive data that can improve land use decision making and satisfy a variety of national and international reporting requirements. Simocute is designed as a decentralized system in which the institutions generate their data and information according to their respective mandates and roles based on previously established requirements. An important role of Simocute is to support the development of protocols, methodologies, and tools to standardize and ensure the quality, comparability, and compatibility of the information produced. The data from the various institutions are integrated into a common platform that allows users to analyze the data and generate periodic reports to respond to various needs, both nationally and internationally. Uh, if you want to know more about Simocute, the project uh, Building Global Capacity to Increase Transparency in the Forest Sector, or Civit Forest, has generated this two-page case study available in English, Spanish, and French uh, to summarize our experience. Also, uh, this case study was include, included in the e-learning course on forest and transparency under the Paris Agreement uh, with other very interesting case studies from the Democratic Republic of Congo and Bangladesh. I really recommend you to take this course if you wish to, do, to better understand the importance of forest-related data collections, analysis, and dissemination in meeting the enhanced transparency framework requirements of the Paris Agreement. If you wish to go deeper, I also invite you to read uh, this recent number of Ambientico magazine, uh, only in Spanish though. However, uh, uh, you, there you can find 11 articles which describe how has been the construction of this monitoring system and the main contributions that Simocute has provided to the country so far. These articles are written by interdisciplinary teams of professionals from different institutions and sectors that are, are leading the development on Simocute in Costa Rica. Here you can also find a presentation of the system from our soon to be or former uh, Minister of Environment and Energy, Carol Manuel Rodriguez, who has been recently appointed as the new CEO of the Global Environmental Facility, the GIA. Well, to give an overview of how Simocute works, I would like to use the information from the e-learning course about the success factors that have enabled its design and implementation. These factors are country ownership and responsibility, institutionalization, legal and policy basis, a landscape approach, and participatory discussion process. Uh, I'll go through them in the next slides. Uh, just to go deeper on what has been introduced in this course. Um, 
Well, a broad range of national and international institutions have supported the development of Simokuti during its design stage, including more than 40 government, academic, international, and other institutions representing especially the environmental and agricultural sectors, but others are included as well. Through the interinstitutional coordination processes, we have ensured that the different actors feel ownership and responsibility for the system, generating more engagement and commitment in their participation. In this list, we just included the acronyms of the institutions and organizations that currently participate in Simokuti. When you can name all of them, that means that you have become an expert in Costa Rican natural resource management and monitoring institutionality. Well, uh, Costa Rica uh, formally initiated the design of Simokute in 2015 under the coordination of the National Center of Geo-Environmental Information that is called, we call CENIGA, and is from the uh, Ministry of Environment and Energy. The roles and responsibilities of the different actors are defined by the institutional arrangements within our legal legislation. Taking this into consideration during the design process, it was defined that the Ministry of Environment and Energy and the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock and the National Geographic Institute should be the leading institutions of the system, as it was defined in our executive decree currently under consultation that will come to regulate the functioning of Simokute. Simokute can be thought as a comprehensive integrated system of systems funded on three interrelated processes, classification or what, the what, the mapping or where, and the inventory and related registries that tells us how much. Uh, the inventory and mapping processes include monitoring subsystems that use common land use, land cover, and or ecosystem classification systems. Uh, primary subsystems include a sample base area estimation monitoring system used to monitor the country's land use and land cover through visual interpretation of these attributes from a systematic grid of plots distributed across the country using high resolution imaginary a field-based national forest inventory and a mapping subsystem. Simokute is constructed using the landscape approach as is an all lands multipurpose system allowing for the monitoring of natural ecosystems as well as the agriculture and biodiversity resources. The work of the various institutions is coordinated to thematic technical work groups. These figures summarize the work groups that are currently active. Others will be activated in the future. These working groups are the sample base area estimation, uh, we call Monitorio por Puntos, the land use and land cover monitor, uh, classification system, uh, the national forest inventory, where we are supporting our colleagues in the uh, CINAC to develop their next forest inventory of Costa Rica. Also, the, uh, working table on agricultural land coordinated by the Ministry of Agriculture and all their working tables on ecosystems and the MAPIL technical working group that is coordinated by the Institute of Geography of Costa Rica. These work groups have an advisory role and their main functions are to prepare, propose, review, and adjust methodologies, indicators, protocols, standards, and other tools for generating data and monitoring the landscape through time while ensuring continuous improvement of Simokutes processes and products. The thematic technical work groups have a decisive role in Simokute, in Simokute's structure as they define the methodologies and processes governing the generation and use of the information. By integrating public institutions, academia, the private sector, and international donors, these work groups become forums of, for discussion and joint networking between sectors to reach consensus while respecting institutional mandates and responsibilities, incorporating scientific and technological contributions and considering the various information needs.
Well, coordinating and moving forward with all these working groups takes a lot of time and effort. Before COVID-19 pandemic, we had a very active agenda involving the meetings of the technical working groups, the advisory coordination committee, and regular capacity building activities uh, directed to address different challenges faced during the different stages of the design of Simokute. Only in 2019, we had 26 of these trainings organized. Um, these are some of the first photos of Simokute taken during the first coordination activities and an internship in the United States held in 2016. Uh, these activities were organized with support of FAO, United, uh, US Forest Service, and Silva Carbon. Here you can meet the former director of uh, Seniga, Mr. Alvaro Aguilar, holding a cake, a cake to celebrate the beginning of what came to be Simukute. In that time, the name wasn't even defined. Alvaro retired in December 2017, and I started uh, to be the director of Seniga and coordinator of Simukute since then. Now, the dynamics of the meetings have changed considerably due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have to use virtual platforms in order to organize all of our meetings. Of course, it is not the same. In this way, we cannot share a cake together, uh, but this hasn't stopped us continuing our work while adapting our plans to the current conditions. Well, this pandemic is also affecting the available resources destined to forest protection. The reduction of the tax collection is compromising the resources available for countries' payment for ecosystem service programs, as reported in this press note. An important part of the financing of the PSA program comes from the collection of a tax on consumption of fossil fuels. This results uh, the results of the pandemic have reduced the consumption of fossil fuels uh, within the country. In consequence, less money is getting to the PSA program budget. As you can see, this is not a very sustainable cycle for our forests, especially now that we are planning to have a decarbonized economy. Uh, to address these challenges, we need to reduce inefficiencies in all of the aspects related to forest management. An integral and robust monitoring system like, like Simokute can help redu reduce those efficiencies in the monitoring processes, reducing duplicate duplicities in the generation, collection, processing, and publication of different information products. This means that we need to reduce inefficiencies and that Simokute can be can provide a very good platform for this. Well, uh, we Ambition uh, for uh, the near future in Simukute. Uh, uh, I guess uh, Kali wanted to interrupt me because I'm getting out of time. Uh, but just want to say that we really are interested in implementing the NFMS assessment tool. Uh, we have new projects to improve data currency and integrate uh, all the reporting processes or, or for different processes in the country. Um, one important aspect is that we want to achieve this higher ambition uh, and to achieve higher ambition we think that we need uh, to generate more transparent data in order to have clear targets and define clear goals and more ambitious goals. Well, uh, sorry it took a little bit more time, but thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you so much, Rafael. Don't worry, we will be asking you many questions coming up, so no, no worries there. Um, but yes, uh, I thank you for the informative overview of the Simukute system and also for the first sneak peek into the new functionality, which was also a surprise for us. So thank you for sharing that uh, in this form. Um, but I'd like to start off right where we left with Rafael. Uh, in your presentation, you, you mentioned that a unique element, as you highlighted, um, that's utilized is the integration of the sectoral data, maps, and also a harmonized classification system through the three subsystems. Um, and I think you've also mentioned in, in our discussions that you've been a part of Simokute, uh, its development since, since its inception in 2015. So you've seen it grow, but you've also seen it go through its growing pains. So could you share with us um, what you feel are some of the main values or the, the, the true value of this integrated system? Um, and perhaps contrastingly, I would imagine that setting up a system like this comes with many challenges. Uh, and growing pains, especially on the technical side. So perhaps you can speak to sort of this duality, some of the value, but also some of the growing pains that have come with setting up such an integrated system. 
Thank you, Khalil. Sure. I, I mentioned that I was, I started with Seneca and Simokuti in 2017, but this uh, started from before 2015, where it wasn't even planned to name it Simokuti. Uh, and <laughs> actually, for, to prepare for this presentation, I've been talking to our colleagues uh, about the history of, uh, of how we have been working to get to where we are right now. Uh, since the beginning, in coordination with key institutions, it was decided to design a system with a holistic approach, uh, ambitioning to create a robust system that could deliver official information for the, the whole of the sector. And we knew that this uh, consideration implied the construction uh, of an open and participatory process, uh, where different stakeholders should be integrated in one standardized system. Um, and these as you mentioned, to be constructed in conjunction with the different systems that already coexist. <laughs> um, you can imagine the growing, some growing pains in the process like this. For instance, it takes more time and planification to organize the different dialogue processes and follow up the agreements. However, this has been a huge opportunity to understand each other, learn from each other, and also analyze new and more efficient strategies for doing uh, or monitoring processes. I just want to provide an example. Uh, in the past, we had these debates with the environmental and agricultural sector regarding how was defined, what was the definition of forest in Costa Rica for a classification system. This discussion was very important and a very important issue for our colleagues in the agricultural sector and in order to move forward with Simokut and their participation. Uh, in 2019, we organized different activities to address this issue. And now, currently, uh, the things have changed and SINAC and the Minister of Agriculture are exploring ideas to co-develop a map uh, that not only include types of forests, but also crops and other land uses. Uh, this kind of coordination leads to better landscape results and Simokut is the platform to facilitate that kind of things in happening. That's a for that. I think your, your response really highlights um, the need for holistic solutions across the landscape. And as we know, land uses, of course, do not operate in isolation, but um, rather the solutions are also going to come from ministers and ministries going through sort of the participatory process that you've highlighted the Simokute started with, but also the data uh, speaking to one another is, is integral. Uh, and I was watching a recent uh, webinar with your now former director, Carlos Manuel Rodriguez, the incoming CEO, and he said that really a basic element of protecting our forests, not only for their conservation value, but also their contribution to both the biodiversity and climate crisis, is ensuring that we don't work in silos. And I think Simokute is, is a really nice example of, of breaking down those silos. Uh, in, in the same webinar, he also touched on the need for enabling conditions, which comes with the support of good governance and clear roles and responsibilities shared by the various national actors and ministries that are a part of, for example, the Simokute process. So, so this next question is also related to a question that was asked by Asuko Okon, and you have to apologize me. I have to apologize for my pronunciation. Um, but I believe that there is an exciting um, interministerial decree on the horizon in Costa Rica, uh, and I think it's in its final consultation process and is awaiting endorsement from the various ministries. So perhaps we can start with Rafael first, and then we can go to Lucio. Uh, but first, Rafael, what do you believe will be the impact of this endorsement, and how will the decree? ensure and even further enhance the delivery of the NFMS, NFMS system. Thank you, Helen. Um, well, I think this decree means a huge political backup for the development of Simokute. This formalizes the joint coordination of this system by the Ministry of Agri Environment and Energy and the Ministry of Agri Agriculture and Livestock and the National Geographic Institute. Um, and will enable us to move uh, from a design stage to an implementation stage, as we call it, um, where we will be delivering different information products and expanding the use of our technological platform. Uh, this decree is establishes an important commitment from the highest political level that will give sustainability to the process and more security to our international stakeholders. We hope that with this decree, we can achieve higher level of impacts from the resources and investments that the government and the international agencies are putting into Simukuti. Great, and I think that uh, we can go to Lucio. Uh, Lucio, as someone who works across the region, I think your perspective is, is here is extremely valuable. Um, in your opening presentation, you also touched on this idea uh, of the utility of sort of legal arrangements and offering uh, solutions to some of the barriers 
that, uh, that occur while setting up an NFMS system. So perhaps you can uh, share with us, you can reflect how you believe this legal aspects, um, such as clear roles and responsibilities really contribute to a more robust NFMS. Uh, and then perhaps even share some reflections from your work across the Latin American and Caribbean region. Yes, Halil, thank you. Yes, I, I think that uh, countries have uh, concentrated uh, their efforts so, so far um, for years uh, to solve uh, technical and methodological elements to analyze uh, information from remote sensing and, and field data. Uh, but uh, with, with the time we uh, observed that one of the, of, of the main challenges that, that uh, countries uh, make face was related, for example, uh, with the uh, institutional arrangement and the roles of responsibilities of the different inst institutions involved in the process to generate information. And, and this lack of clarity on the roles and responsibility uh, was uh, become a, a weaknesses a weakness of the uh, national forest monitoring system. So uh, the the adoption of legal arrangement uh, offer part of the solution to to help warranty the sustainability to increase the national ownership. This is that's clear in the in the presentation of Rafael and also to contribute maybe to ensure financial support. Uh, national financial support uh, and the interoperability of the different functions of the uh, of the of the national monitoring system at the at the country level. So the the legal solutions will include elements to articulate these roles and responsibilities of different institutions in relation to the national forest monitoring system, and and, and may also promote the allocation of financial and human resources. This is a, and, and also a broad experience in, in the regions with other countries had, uh, that has also uh, uh, approach, uh, make this approach to strengthen its national forest monitoring system. Thank you, Lucy. I think this is very important. Um, I also wanted to give the chance to Rocio to elaborate a little bit more on, on her presentation. She, uh, Rocio, you briefly touched on this NFMS tool as a key deliverable. Uh, from the Civet Forest project. And you mentioned that you are currently collaborating with country partners to implement the new tool. And, and you discussed how it sort of aligns the voluntary guidelines for national forest monitoring. But beyond that, it also allows countries to prioritize action um, to improve national forest monitoring systems. So can you perhaps share some of your experiences with uh, the work being done in pilot countries and how the tool is being utilized currently? Thank you, Halil. Yes, uh, maybe first of all, I would have to say that the tool uh, provides um, countries a way to assess their national forest monitoring system uh, about uh, key good practices aggregated into three categories, institutional arrangement, measurement, estimation, and reporting and verification. Um, it facilitates the identification of needs and gaps in order to establish or strengthen the country's forest monitoring. Therefore, it could be used by countries at various starting points. Uh, we have used the tool with the six pilot countries of the project, which includes Guatemala, Honduras, Thailand, Laos, Cote d'Ivoire, and Uganda. And we are looking forward for its use by other countries that might be interested, of course. Up to now, we have seen that the tool has facilitated capacity assessment of the system and facilitation of dialogue with key national stakeholders, helping to pool their firsthand knowledge of a problem or development challenge and identify possible solutions. Let me provide an example. Uganda has moved and dedicated efforts toward a sustainable and national forest monitoring system in the last years. This tool has helped to identify institutional arrangement weakness, but also prioritize data sharing protocols as one of the most urgent aspects in the coming months. Therefore, uh, this action will allow data to be more transparent and accessible to a wider audience. Thank you, back to you. Uh, thank you very much, Rocio. So as you mentioned, the tool identifies alignment under the, these three broad categories and then further helps to prioritize actions to fill gaps and needs uh, to strengthen forest monitoring. Um, and I think that given the time, I think this can uh, lead us to perhaps our final question for Rafael uh, and bring us full circle. 
because I think on one hand, we have this extremely positive case study from Costa Rica, where there seems to be not only government support, but international collaboration, um, international funding, advanced technical capacity, but overall an understanding uh, from the country, but also its citizens of the importance of doing things sort of in an integrated and streamlined manner. So for the final question, I wanted to go to Rafael and ask, uh, Rafael, where do you see the opportunities then for collaborating with the CIBIT Forest projects? Or how do you foresee the potential use of a tool like the NFMS tool um, to be used to further bolster the work that you're already doing, uh, although great work you're already doing in Costa Rica on forest monitoring? Thank you, Halil. Um, actually, we consider this new NFMS tool as a very valuable tool to evaluate Simocute uh, with an international standard and identify the gaps where we can keep improving. Uh, personally, I have already assessed the tool and it got me thinking a lot about where we are and what still needs to be done. Um, but we would like to start a formal process with uh, uh, an open participation of our partners in Simocut in order to generate an integrated assessment and translate it to actions in the near future. Um, also, uh, we want to work with uh, CVIT in promoting the use of the tool and share our, our experience in order to help other countries address the same challenges we have had in the creation of our monitoring system. That's great to hear, Rafael. Thank you. Um, so everyone, I, I hate to disrupt a good thing, uh, and especially a fruitful dialogue, but I know that we're very quickly running out of time. Uh, so as we prepare to wrap up, I just want to say a very quick thank you to our panelists for this rich dialogue, uh, especially those from Costa Rica who are joining us. And really, we've spent majority of our hour together sharing experiences from Simocute. Um, but I think that we have much more, learn, uh, much more that we can learn together. And hopefully, uh, Rafael, as, as you mentioned, this only marks the beginning of a much longer and comprehensive dialogue together. So uh, to wrap up and send us on our way today, I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Julian Fox, the team leader of the National Forest Monitoring System, to say some final remarks. Julian, to you. Uh, thanks, Khalil. Um, well, what a great uh, webinar. I've really enjoyed it, actually. But as FAO, we're, we're really honored to accompany countries and forest stakeholders on their journey toward more transparent forest data, which is really the backbone of the, of the Paris Agreement for the forest sector. I mean, for forest data, FAO's starting point is the voluntary guidelines for national forest monitoring, as agreed with the FAO member countries. It, it advocates for multi-purpose national forest monitoring systems, and that's why this is such a fantastic example. I encourage you to use the publication, which has now also become integrated into the NFMS assessment tool developed under the CIBIT Forest Project that Rocio has uh, has, uh, has provided the link to. So I, I wanted to just pick up on some of the wonderful points I've heard during this hour, um, particularly how Simakute is such an excellent example of a multi-purpose uh, monitoring system, supporting the provision of data for reporting, but also national needs for decision-making and land management. And I'd like to highlight four key elements that I've, that I've heard today that really impressed me about Simakute, and I think from which other countries can learn. Uh, Simocote provides uh, really transparent, reliable, and credible data. You know, that, that key data provision function for international reporting, for measurement reporting and verification, and other reporting needs that now transition into the enhanced transparency framework of the Paris Agreement. And uh, as Raphael said, they do this by developing protocols, methodologies, and tools to standardize, you know, and ensure the quality, comparability, and compatibility of the information produced, which is really important for, for reporting. Raphael gave us a sneak preview of the new portal and the system makes data accessible to national and international stakeholders, which is so important. You know, um, geospatial data, documentation, everything that stakeholders can need, I think particularly at the national level, and there's many national stakeholders here with us today, it's essential um, that people are able to follow their country's progress, get behind the ministries that are, that are working on these systems. And, and I, I, it's fantastic that it also allows users to, to create their own data and generate their own reports, which is really powerful. My third point is that um, it produces very relevant data for multiple needs. I mean, it has this key function to provide data for forest and land management in Costa Rica with, with cross-sectoral integration, which is in fact extremely rare for a forest monitoring system for forests and agriculture. All the AFOLU sectors, as we say in technical jargon, I mean, agriculture, forestry, and other land uses. And um, on this note, we have a, an upcoming FAO publication called Better Data, Better Decisions Towards Impactful Forest Monitoring. And in this publication, we're really happy 
to detail through several case studies how relevant forest monitoring data can be catalytic in improving decision making and land management. And uh, this example of Simakote, where they've been integrated data across agriculture and forestry to support decision making for both sectors is really powerful because forestry and agriculture need to be considered together, right? When making land management decisions, not they're not mutually exclusive. So that's why I think, uh, yeah, and also the strong participatory and, and consultative process that would have would have been a huge burden for Costa Rica, but it's just so valuable now that the, the final product is there and it's multi-sectoral and has that broad um, buy-in from the stakeholders. I think the most important thing that I noticed is that it's, it's gonna be a sustainable system. And as uh, it's super exciting to hear Raphael mention that a decree is being consulted. And as, uh, as Lucio said, you know, an institutionalized national forest monitoring system, a part of official government structures is just essential for the sustainability of this, this valuable data that's informing decision-making and, and reporting. And I'll, I'll quickly mention another upcoming FAO publication, uh, Legal Frameworks for Sustainable National Forest Monitoring Systems. I mean, we really need to strengthen the legal basis, the institutional arrangements for, for these systems to make sure that they're sustainable into the future. So in summary, I mean, as FAO, we're really honored to, to sit with Costa Rica for an hour and, and, and also work with Costa Rica in the future on the continuous improvement of, of Simucote. Um, and and we, particularly, I think this is a fantastic opportunity for South-South triangular cooperation between Costa Rica and the other countries that are present here today. And maybe in my closing comment, I would like to echo Raf Raphael's statement that, um, that high levels of transparency can facilitate high levels of ambition. I mean, this is really important. I think our, our shared vision is that transparent, reliable, relevant, accessible, and sustainable national forest monitoring systems can support climate action on the ground. You know, as we've seen here today, in the excellent example of Costa Rica, and, and that continuous improvement can support higher levels of ambition, which is so desperately needed at this critical moment for, uh, for mankind. So thank you very much for, to Rafael and Costa Rica. Thank you very much for your valuable time. And uh, back to Khalil. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Uh, thanks so much, Julian, for these rich final remarks. And of course, noting all the very key resources that are also available. I think Emily has done her best to pop those into the chat box. Um, but if, if colleagues aren't able to find them, we'll make sure that we send it in a follow-up uh, email. But uh, last thing from my side, I see that we have many questions that have populated the Q&A box. Um, our technical colleagues have done their best to answer as many of them as possible. But uh, just to note, we have taken down and we will be trying our best to respond to as many of the relevant questions as possible. So. Uh, we will send those in follow-up in the coming weeks. But uh, I think that that brings us to the end of our webinar today. I think we're about five minutes over, but that's okay. So a big thanks to all of you for joining us today from the CBIT Forest team at FAO, from the regional and country offices, and from our colleagues at the Ministry of Environment and Energy. We really wish you a lovely remainder of the day, and that is all from our side. So just wishing you a great day and take care, everyone.